Welcome along guys, I'm back in the garage. Now I know I promised you the bike would be being mapped, would be the next garage video on the uh, Ninja, but I, I may have lied or things haven't worked out. I didn't lie, let's just get that straight, but things haven't worked out quite like that. And it's been slightly delayed the mapping, so that's gonna happen in the new year now. But things haven't been stood still for the Ninja. Oh, no, 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 no. There's been some new carbon. Hmm. So what I have mentioned in one of my past vlogs is some extra carbon bits going onto the H2. The, to make it look like an H2R replica really. Now I don't want to go for the full on wings, I like the mirrors and they have the indicators in. So to put on the big spoiler mirror things that the H2R has is too much trouble. So I want to keep these mirrors but I've gone for the side wings that go on the side of the bike and I've also thanks to Moto Composites, gone for the full H2R carbon front cowl. It's a big piece this, it is a monstrous piece of beautifulness. That is the, the H2R-esque carbon front end, so I'm going to keep the shiny side panels, but the H2R has this carbon front end. Now what I've done is I've had to put the green highlight stickers back onto this. Now, Will's Motorcycles did me a bit of a deal, but these stickers are about 130 quid. So they look just for the little green stickers and the the emblem to go on the nose. So I had to I've done all that already. So this is all ready to go. This is beautiful. Look at that. We've now got a scoop either side because normally this one's blank. So it's got to be the mesh here. The headlight's got to go in the middle here. But it's going to be quite a job to fit this. It's not going to be a five minute job. This I think it's going to be quite involved. Hence why we're doing a video. Oh God, get back there, you better. Get back in there. The new bike is here, as you can see behind me. That'll be the next build series starting on this. Well, not really a build, more of a sort of restoration project almost on this one. So I'm really excited about getting the, the hyper motard under the knife. So that will be following up. Those videos are gonna be a bit more rough and ready. There's gonna probably be more of them, maybe a bit more handheld, GoPro-y stuff. You know, it's gonna be a bit, bit like the original Blade build series, a bit less edited, a bit more, bit longer you know just me chatting more probably <laughs> but there to come we're talking about the h2 now that is the moto composites carbon front cow what they've done slightly differently with this these pieces here are actually part of the cow well on the standard bike these are separate pieces so they've integrated a lot of the parts to simplify it basically what this is if you remember last time they do different two different sorts of carbon they do the fiberglass backed carbon which is cheaper or the full carbon fiber this is the full carbon fiber this one this isn't the fiberglass backed this is the expensive one but it is rather gorgeous let's start stripping and see how we go. I think basically take the side panels off, loosen the bolts, mirrors off, and then see, see where we are. Let's get going. Panels off. So that's the left hand panel removed. So I think I'll do the right hand now and then see how we get the cowl off. Uh, I think there's like four bolts holding this on somewhere. There's the mirror bolts. This left hand panel is the pig. This is the one with the rectifier in. I'm gonna see if I can get to the rectifier wiring before having releasing the panel. You know, you can't even get to the wiring. It's not until your panel is in your hands, you can then try and unplug it. Oh, it's so tricky, this bit. Okay, left-hand panel off. That's the uh, rectifier wires. Because I was expecting it this time, I managed to get it off without damaging anything, which is always nice. There it is on the floor. Safe and sound, hopefully. But, but don't fall over, Hyper. I also took off the air intake. There's the air filter in here, and there's that big pipe that goes along this side and comes in through the front here. So that's gone, that made it easy to get the panel off. Now it's a case of getting the cowl off. 
Now I'm not even sure, it's obviously held on by the mirrors. There must be some other bolts somewhere as well. It's held on underneath, I think, slightly under here. Hmm, how do we get that off? Yeah, as I suspected, it's tricky to work on. <laughs> I've nearly got it off, it's all hanging down. There's a few wire, wires which are still connected to the inner assembly, like the little fuse box there, some other bits and bobs. I've got it sort of rested on the mud guard, on some rag, but uh, oh, it's all a bit scary. There's a lot of connectors in here, a lot of gubbins. It took me ages to work out how this was held on, and it was held on by these two bolts here, which came up underneath the fairing cowl. But I'm taking the whole headlight, all the front end away with the headlight intact, and then strip it out afterwards. I've just got little things like that fuse box attached to this piece, which I've got to try and pry away. But we're getting there, we are getting there. Oof, bloody nightmare. Well, there we go, it is off. So that's all the headlights. I've got to strip all the headlight out of this, all these other little pieces out of the inside of this, mount that into the, the motor composites cowl, and then try and put it back on. Oh, it's, it's, gonna, it's fiddly, this. This is, this is a tricky job. I didn't think this was going to be easy. So now it's a case of how well do all the mounting holes line up in the motor composites version. Hopefully OK. So that's the inside of the cowl. And that is the headlight unit with the two little running lights. It's a huge thing. It's a monstrous piece. All one piece. Like headlight. It's absolutely humongous. Well, oh, what a nightmare. Sorry, I've just skipped ahead and the cowl is on. <laughs> when I started stripping things down, it all got a bit real. It got a bit intense, so I didn't start recording. It is a real... I, I expected this bike to be a bit of a pain to fit this cowl. And it was, <laughs> simply. It's a quite a complex piece. There's a lot of mountings on the inside. The biggest problem was getting these little running lights the bike has to fit on the inside of the, the new cow. I did, had to do some trimming on here. It took me ages, basically. But I have got it back on. A couple of things to note, if you're going to do this yourself, is the actual subframe of the bike, the clock subframe, that the mirrors mount to, that the easy inner pieces mount to. It seems to be actually made of cheese. <laughs> the aluminium used is so soft, I've actually almost cross-threaded some of the, the, one of the mirror bolts almost cross-threaded on me. It's just so easy to actually cross-thread on that aluminium. It's so thin, it's so, it's not thin, it's just soft. It's literally like a good bloody cheddar. So be very, very careful if you're gonna try and do this on these. So, what have we got to do now? So I'm gonna fit the panel I've already added the wing on, I'm gonna fit that back onto the bike. And then for the panel I haven't fitted the wing on, this side, which I'll show you how the wings fit. Because these are the same panels as what's on the H2R, all the full factory provisions are there to actually mount these wing kits. So they're not just bolted on, you know, they, these are properly fixed to the bike. So we'll go through fitting these in a minute in case you want a H2R up your H2. Top tip is get yourself some new crush washers when you do this. I actually forgot to put these in before I put the cowl on. So I've had to struggle trying to put it in from the back. You know, it's, it's awkward. Best thing to do, I found out, is actually get one, screw the bolt into it, and then push the bolt in and push it through. But get new ones, much easier. Make the job much easier. Right, let's get this panel back on this side this panel, get that back on, and then we can concentrate putting the fin, the wings, on the other side. Woohoo, we're getting there. Connect up the bloody radiator again. Something like so. Something like that. The wings actually fit onto this piece here, this little, yeah, that comes off and the wing basically sits on there instead, something like that. So to get to that, you have to take off this inner part of the fairing all under all these bolts, lift that out and then you'll find that this piece is bolted on. So let's, uh, let's get stuck in. More. 
Bingo. And as I mentioned, the rectifier is also located within this panel. It's one, one place to put it. So when you're down into the depths of the panel, this is the bolts which hold that little, that little piece on here. So if we take that out, we need to keep that, I think. Then that little piece comes off and you put the wing on in its place. Also doubles up as a maraca. That then sits in that recess. See it all lovely little fitted recess here. Flip it over. There we go. And they're absolutely solid. Mounted as per the factory. So when you're done, you're left with the standard H2 blank. I guess it's a wing blank, really. Put it in the box a bit. Time to refit. So, let's get the bugger back on the bike. First things first is to reconnect the rectifier wiring. Give it a pair of hands. Stage. Panel fitted. Again, took some wiggling, took some jiggling, but it got it in. <laughs> right, let's just put the air scoop back on, cover back on, and I think we're done. What a job! It's a bit of a nightmare that. It took me about five hours to do that. Don't go into a job like this thinking it's going to take you an hour. You'd, everything needs to be adaptive. You think just fitting on a simple panel back on, no, it doesn't quite line up. You have to just move the holes around a little bit. It is, where is it? It is very, very good quality carbon, but it's a complex piece. You know, all of the mounting holes have to be put into it. All of the mounting brackets have to be put on there. And sometimes they may not quite line up. So you may have to do a little bit of tweaking. I had to use a reamer to make some of the holes a little bit bigger, a little bit of filing, get yourself a Dremel. You know, it does say to fit a complex piece of carbon like this, you know, you need some bodywork skills. You do have to do a little bit of tweaking. So don't go into it thinking it's just a bolt on and swap over. It's more than that. And uh, but the end results, I think it looks pretty decent. I need to now get it outside and let's do a bit of a reveal because it looks incredible. I think it's going to be worth all the effort. But at the moment, I'm like, oh, I'm really not sure I would have bothered because it's been a lot of work. But hopefully, hopefully the end results will be worth it. Links below to the Moto Composites kit. They do a lot of stuff for the H2, also a lot of stuff for the Hyper as well, but I don't wanna go carbon mad on that. That's a different sort of bike, but a lot of, lot of carbon fiber. The quality of their kit is fantastic. Even a complex piece like this takes some work around. So just think, you know, if Moto Composites work takes a little bit of an adaptation, the cheaper stuff is almost gonna be impossible. Only one thing left, time for the reveal.